Final lesson of this uh, unit, lesson 2.5, solving radical equations. Uh, we take some of the information that we've learned throughout the unit and we uh, apply it all together. Uh, let's get started. When solving a radical equation, um, follow the following steps. Uh, so what I've given you here, rather than some of the, the examples, is um, I've given you these five steps that I want us to, to go through. As long as you go through these ones each time, you should be fine. Um, I'll also, of course, take you through some examples in a second. It's a very short lesson. Uh, it says identify and state any restrictions. So we've gone over kind of how to state restrictions. Um, it's not too tough. I'll also show you an easy way when we're dealing with radicals here that works every single time. Um, step two, isolate the radical on one side of the equation. What I mean by that is just get the radical by itself. Get rid of everything else that is on that side, wherever it happens to be. Uh, square each side. That's basically how you get rid of the radical so that you don't have to deal with that anymore. And then we solve for the variable in the remaining equation. And then I want to make sure that we perform a check. We're also going to look at this word right here, what uh, extraneous roots are. Um, it says roots that do not actually satisfy the original equation. And of course, if we have extraneous roots, that means we uh, must reject them. All right. So uh, let's, uh, let's give these a try. So 3 is equal to 4 root x. So we're trying to find what value for x will make this equation equal. So step one says we need to identify and state any restrictions. And so this is what I was saying. I was give you a little hint for this. Whenever you have a radical, what I always want you to do is I always want you to take x and set whatever is underneath the radical sign greater than or equal to 0, and then you cannot go wrong. Let me give an example. Let's say underneath the radical sign it was x uh, minus 1. What I would get you to do is say x plus, sorry, x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, and then solve it. So move the 1 to the other side, and your restriction for that would be like so. All right. So we'll try some of those, but the first step always is take whatever is underneath the radical sign and set it greater than or equal to 0. So that would be our restriction. Now, second step is isolate our um, uh, radical. So I'll divide both sides by 4. We have 3 quarters is equal to the square root of x. Now to get x by itself, we will square both sides. And we have 9 out of 16 is equal to x. All right, so that would be your solution. Now I'd want you to perform a check. All right, when we perform a check, we have 3 is equal to 4 times square root of 9 over 16. All right, and so we're hoping that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So we have 3 is equal to 4. This turns out to be 3 quarters. Of course, those 4s cancel, so we have 3 is equal to 4. All right, so ooh, not 3 is equal to 4. Let's go 3 is equal to 3. All right, so what we're checking for is that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. I don't actually care what answer I get right out here. I just want to make sure that the um, both sides of the equations are equal. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Start out with our restriction. So our restriction, like I said, I'll take x plus 1 and set it greater than or equal to 0. That means my restriction is x must be greater than or equal to. Moving that to the other side becomes a negative 1. That being my restriction to start. Now I will start isolating. To isolate, maybe I'll make a note over here. To isolate, use reverse bed mass. So you do your addition, subtraction first, then your division, multiplication, and so on. So what I would do here, and this is where students get into trouble, is they want to divide this 2 right away. So we're not going to do that. We're going to add 7 to both sides. So we have 2, the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 20, dividing by 2. Those 2's cancel. We have the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 10. Now in order to get rid of that radical sign, we're going to square both sides. We have x plus 1 now is equal to 100. And moving the 1 to the other side, we have x is equal to 99 as our solution. All right, once again, I do want you to be performing checks for these every time. On the next page, we'll actually be going over some where if you do not do a check, you'll be absolutely hooped. Uh, all right, using brackets, of course, to substitute in, we get 2. And then let's simplify the radical here. 99 plus 1 is 100. Square root of 100 is 10, so this is 20. Minus 7 is equal to 13. 13 equals 13. I always tell my students each year that I have students that just kind of go through the, the motions here and just automatically write like 13 equals 13. Um, well, if you don't actually take this check seriously, it will bite you. All right, 
next page C so again start out with your restrictions if you want to write restrictions at the top that's often useful that lets me know kind of what's going on again just take whatever the radicals are if there's more than one radical then you must make a restriction for both of them these ones are exactly the same so you can just say that X is greater than or equal to zero um, okay, so let's solve this one. What we're going to do, since there are two radicals, notice that they have the same um, uh, variable underneath the radicand and same index. We can combine those. So I'm going to do that right away. I'm going to subtract 4 root x from both sides. This gives me 3 is equal to root x plus 1. I'm trying to isolate my radical. I'll subtract 1 from both sides. I get 2 is equal to root x. Now what I will do is I gotta uh, isolate or try to get x by itself. So I square both sides, to get rid of the radical, and we get x is equal to four. Quite simple. Okay. Of course, we're always checking to make sure does it pass your restriction. Yep. All right. And now we will substitute in. So I'll put my check down here, labeling what I'm doing. Four times root four, that gives you an eight. Eight plus three is equal to eleven. On this side, we have five times, that'll give me a two. And we got eleven equals eleven. So we're happy, happy, happy. All right. Now, let's uh, move on to this one. Two radicals. All right. So we start out with my restrictions. Something interesting kind of happens with this one. All right. So this is this would kind of fall into the category being maybe a little bit more difficult. So always take whatever's underneath your radical. And uh, set it greater than or equal to zero. So my restriction for this would be x must be greater than or equal to one. But now I have two restrictions, so I got to deal with the other one. Two x plus three must also be greater than or equal to zero, because of course we cannot have a negative number underneath either of those um, radical signs. So we get two x must be greater than or equal to negative three, or x must be greater than or equal to negative three over two. All right, so those being my two restrictions. But if you look at these, there's one that kind of trumps the other. One says x must be greater than one. There is said x has to be greater than a negative number. Well, I would say that this one on the left-hand side here is more restrictive, so I can eliminate that one and say that that is my only restriction. All right. Now, to solve these, since I have radicals on both sides of the equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to square them right off the bat. When you square them right off the bat, the beautiful thing is you get rid of the radical sign, so you just have what I have like so. Gathering my like terms, I'll subtract an x from both sides, and subtract a 3. We have x is equal to negative 4. Okay. Now, this is an example, as you'll see in a second, of something that we call an extraneous root. Okay. For instance, let's look. We got an answer. We did good math here. We didn't screw anything up. We got x equals negative 4. All right. Well, let's take a look. Does that meet this restriction? Is negative 4 greater than or equal to negative 1? No. All right. So since it does not pass the restriction, this root is rejected. So your actual answer for this one would be no solution. What that means, folks, is that there's no x value that you can get such that you can put this into the original equation up here, and you can get that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Another uh, point I want to make is if, let's say we had got that that answer was x equals 4 and it passed that restriction, let's say this restriction up here, all right? Then what you'd have to do is you will have to substitute it back into the equations. It's also possible that it could fail. When you substitute in, the left-hand side will not equal the right-hand side. Then that would also re um, result in a rejected root, and your answer would also be no solution. Okay, So that concludes uh, this lesson and this unit. Uh, you can now move on to your review material, complete your quizzes, hit me in the hot seat, and uh, then you're off for your unit test.